Hello everyone, welcome to my channel all about mechanical engineering. In today's video, we will discuss the basics of projections. Now there are various topics which includes the term projection, such as orthographic projection, isometric projection, projection of points, projection of lines, projection of planes, projection of solids and many more. Now is projection just an another name of the shadow? Let us try to understand. So what is projection? Before going to the projections, let us understand the shadow first. So there is a torch. When you start the torch, the light rays which are emitted from that torch are scattering away and they are spreading wide. So if you are representing the same on this diagram for understanding purpose, let us take a torch. There is an object kept in front of it at particular distance and at some more distance you have kept a screen. Once you start the torch, the light rays will be scattering away when they are traveling forward. So once they are at this object, then a particular shadow has been created of this object on the screen. Now this is termed as shadow because it will be having the same shape as of the object but it may have different size. Now the size which is obtained here in the shadow can also be changed or will also be depending upon the distance between the object and the torch. Also the distance between the object and the shadow. So if I move this object towards the torch here, then you will be having a larger shadow obtained as compared to the actual size of the object. Whereas if I move this object from this position to a position nearer to the screen, then the size of the shadow will be reduced as compared to the previous position that is this one. So here it should be understood that a shadow will have the same shape but can have different size. Now coming to the projection. Imagine a torch whose light does not scatter that is light rays runs parallel to each other rather than scattering away. So if you have an imaginary torch which is kept at infinite distance, there is an object placed in front of it and there is a screen. When there will be light rays emitted from this torch which runs parallel to each other like this, then whatever will be obtained as a result on the screen this will be having the same shape and same size as of the object. That's why it will be termed as projection. Now comparing shadow and projection identifying the differences. So let us compare side by side. The first difference, a shadow has the same shape as of the object but can differ in size. Also here I have mentioned size depends on the distance between the light source that is the torch and object as well as the distance between the object and the screen. So here it is important where the torch is kept, where the object is placed and at what distance the screen is there. That will decide the size of the shadow. Whereas for a projection same shape as well as size of the object will be obtained here in the projection. So it does not matter where you have kept the torch at what distance, where the object is present from the torch, how much away it is or how much away the screen is kept from the object. Second difference, in order to obtain the shadow, the object must be placed between the light source and the screen. So in order to obtain this shadow, you have to place this object such that it is in between the light source that is the torch and the plane on which the shadow is to be obtained that is the screen in this case. Whereas 
for a projection it can be obtained even the screen is placed between the light source and object so if you remove the screen from here you place it here still you will have the projections obtained on the screen so this is regarding an imaginary concept because we don't have any torch which is having the light rays running parallel to each other so you have to understand i have given an example of torch in order to make you understand better now once we are clear with the projection we have to understand the quadrant how it is to be identified in which quadrant the object is placed so we have a four quadrant system and let us say we are observer standing here and we are looking all the four quadrants from this side so this is a horizontal plane hp and this is a vertical plane vp so if we are talking about an object which is placed above hp and in front of vp so in this case the object is placed in first quadrant because above hp and in front of vp is first quadrant if above hp and behind vp we are talking about if something is given to us whose projection has to be obtained which is mentioned with above hp and behind vp given conditions then we are talking about second quadrant if an object is placed below hp and behind vp then in this case it is placed in third quadrant and if it is placed below hp and in front of vp then it is placed in fourth quadrant now the most important point after identifying the quadrant is to remember their front view and top view positions with respect to the quadrant given to us because every quadrant will have different locations to choose where the front view and top view has to be drawn so this is your four quadrant system you are looking again from here a is in first quadrant okay i have taken a point a for better understanding i have placed it in the first quadrant if you are looking from this side you will be having a projection that is front view a dash which is obtained on the vertical plane here and if you are looking from the top here then it will be having a projection on this horizontal plane somewhere here and it will be having top view a obtained in this manner here let us try to understand how it will be drawn on our page this is our xy line and this is xy line is nothing but the line which you can see here which is at the intersection of horizontal and vertical plane is nothing but here xy line as you can see here for the first quadrant when you are looking from this side this a dash is obtained above this line above xy so for the first quadrant front view that is in our question a dash is above xy now we don't have this surface available to draw on our books so we rotate it 90 degree clockwise once you rotate it it is obvious that this top view of A will be going below the XY line. So top view A is below the XY line. This is the condition for first quadrant. Front view is above XY line and top view is below XY line. Now consider another point B which is given in second quadrant. Still we are looking from the same direction. We are not going to change the direction of view or the observer for every quadrant it remains same for all the four quadrants so as you can see here b dash that is the front view of b will be again obtained on this vertical plane above x y line whereas if you are looking from top the top view of b can be obtained here and it will be on a single vertical line now for the second quadrant as you can see here b dash that is the front view of b is above xy line 
so for second quadrant b dash that is front view is above x y now as we have rotated this plane clockwise 90 degree the same has to be applied for this one you cannot change the direction neither you can change the angle so if you rotate at 90 degree it will be overlapping with the vertical plane here and obviously this top view of v will be coming above x y line so top view of v is also above x y line so for second quadrant both front view and top view are to be drawn above x y line let us take c in third quadrant here now when you are looking from this side again c dash can be seen below this x y line here whereas the c point that is the top view can be seen here on this horizontal plane for the third quadrant as the front view is below x y line so here in this front view c dash it will be below x y line here for the third quadrant whereas when you are going to rotate this horizontal plane by 90 degree clockwise c will be coming up so it will be above x y line so for third quadrant it is opposite of the first one for the first quadrant front view was above x y line top view was below x y line rather for the third quadrant front view is below x y line and top view is above x y line coming to the fourth quadrant the last one let us take another point d in the fourth quadrant here when you are seeing from this side we can obtain d dash on the vertical plane below x y line and we will be having d on this horizontal plane somewhere here now as we can see the front view d dash will be below x y line here for the fourth quadrant also when you rotate this horizontal plane clockwise 90 degrees so this hp will be overlapped with this vertical plane somewhere here and d top view of d will be obtained below x y line so these are the positions of front view and top view with respect to the quadrant given to us now some important points which you have to remember always remember the positions of front view and top view as per the given quadrant identified so you have to remember for the first quadrant front view is above top view is below x y line for second quadrant both front view and top view are to be drawn above x y line for third quadrant front view should be below x y line top view should be above x y line and for fourth quadrant both front view and top view should be below x y line now you don't have to remember all the four quadrants you just have to remember first two because the rest of the two are opposite if you remember first and second then third is opposite of the first one and fourth is opposite of second now here we have written that front view should be above x y line top view should be below x y line now what comes to our mind is what distance should be taken to draw the front view and top view so the second point you have to remember here distance to draw the front view and top view to draw front view always you have to use the distance given with hp whatever distance is mentioned in the question with hp you have to use that distance in order to draw the front view whereas whatever distance is given with vp will be utilized to draw the top view if in case there is no distance mentioned with hp or vp it is mentioned on hp or on vp then you have to shift that corresponding view on xy line third point front view is represented with small letters along with dash as we have seen in the previous slide a dash is an example i have taken here whereas the top view is represented with small letters only that is without any dash hope you have enjoyed the video 
If you haven't subscribed my channel yet or you are new to my channel then don't forget to subscribe it. Thank you for watching.